Right now, the mountain gorillas are not more than 1,000. They all occur in the wild because they are not able to live within zoos and, and other, uh, you know, human-dominated conservation areas or, or, or projects outside the wild. They occur only in Uganda, Rwanda, and Congo, in the mountains that are dominated by volcanoes and the forest related to them. So, in 1932, Buindi was made a game sanctuary to conserve specifically the mountain gorillas in that forest. And later it was made a forest reserve, but the conservation of those animals remained very low. Jonathan Baranga is a professor of zoology and wildlife. He campaigned for the formation of Wind Impenetrable National Park and also worked in the park for over six years, raising the conservation status of the Windy Impenetrable Forest to protect the wild animals, specifically in addition to other natural happenings. The intention was set clear from the start. There was an intention to conserve the forest specifically for the mountain gorillas and other animals that live there. In 1991, Bwindi became a national park. This campaign was not limited to Bwindi, but also recommended the raising of the conservation status of Mgahinga, Renzori, Semleki, Kibale, and Elgon. The professor shudders of what would have happened if there was no intervention. <laughs> I would shudder to think what would have happened if we had not intervened. Because I know very many government officials and businessmen were not only selectively cutting mahogany from windy and other areas, but there was a lot of encroachment, there was a lot of gold mining and many other things, and there was a destruction of the general environment. So if this had not happened, I think the forest would have been invaded by those who think that going in and growing potatoes would be worthwhile compared to conserving the area. During his time at Uganda National Parks, Professor Jonathan Baranga also campaigned for the involvement of the neighboring communities in conservation. The intention, according to Professor Jonathan Baranga, was to increase ownership and responsibility taken by the neighboring community towards conservation of the park. So that this is seen as a people's resource rather than a foreign, uh, uh, foreign interest project that would benefit only foreign tourists. According to Bashir Hanji, the communications manager, Uganda Wildlife Authority, communities have to ensure that they offer protection to the gorillas by ensuring that among us themselves, they are not people in to poach the gorillas. If the communities don't see any benefit, believe you me, they will never, ever try to do anything in terms of protecting them. Uh, there must be a very good and robust uh, benefit sharing mechanism uh, with communities who are neighboring these protected areas where we have these gorillas. In Uganda, communities have managed to get in and have an effect by benefiting from the forest and also contributing to ensure that nobody would destroy the environment.